Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're just going to wait uh, a little while while people start attending. My name is Paul Cisse. Um, I'm the founder of the National Diversity Awards and various inclusion uh, initiatives across the UK. And it's a great pleasure to have so many people that are going to be hopefully joining us today. Put in the chat where you're from, please. What you're doing, what community organization are you from? What difference you've made in the world? why you've chosen to be part of the national we want to know if you're in scotland whether you're in devon and cornwall leeds manchester you know please put in the chat where you are we want to know about it um and i'm here in sunny liverpool so if there's any liverpoolians here please 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 um give us a shout as well um and we've got a real treat for you today so today really is about the national diversity awards and how you can get recognized through the process of the NDAs. So far, we've had over 35,000 35, nominations and votes, um, and we've only been open about three or four weeks, which is phenomenal. Um, and it's a real, real special kind of award where we have every strand of diversity in one room. There's no agenda of you know discrimination anywhere. It's, it's just one big celebration of DNI and role models like yourselves that are just doing fantastic work, vital work. And we as the judges and the sponsors were talking before about the vital work that you actually do in the communities. So we're absolutely honored to look at your nominations and to read them and to read the vast amount of work that you do across the UK. Okay, so before we start, I'm gonna go off talk about the journey, but before we do that, we're gonna introduce our esteemed panel, who's gonna take you through their own kind of personal journeys of the NDAs. Um, and why they're involved. So I'm going to start with Dr. Amiru Raju, who was a lifetime achiever last year in Liverpool. Um, how are you doing to Dr. Amiru Raju? I'm Obi. doing great, Matt. Doing great. Pleased to be with you. Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself first. Oh, my favourite subject. So um, I'm this, by day, I'm the CEO of a well-known Midlands-based charity called Disability Director, user-led service of disabled people with lots of different uh, projects running at any one time. I've been here next week, I will have been here 30 years. So uh, I started when the charity literally started. So uh, an incredible journey for me and the charity at the same time. I'm also a uh, author of a uh, book called Walk Like a Man. It's available on Amazon if anybody wants to buy it. Um, and, um, I'm also the deputy to the Lord Lieutenant of Derbyshire, so I do yeah. uh, some representation on His Majesty the King, if needed. Fantastic. Um, just before we go, I was just looking in the chat, we've got people from Birmingham, Felix Stowe, Derby, South Seas, Sheffield. I just love to see, you know, the the breadth of the of the uh, of the nominations. And if you look on the interactive map, go into the interactive map after this, not now because we want you to listen to us, but. Just look at the nominations on there and just look at the, the breadth of work that goes on there. And we've got Claire Cook from Sunny Liverpool as well. Um, so great stuff. Next, we're going to go to um, the wonderful Christos, who is a sponsor for the National Diversity Awards, who works for Auto Trader. Do you want to give us a brief introduction to yourself? Uh, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Christos. I'm the Public Culture Director for Auto Trader, and I'm also a trustee for a charity, uh, We Are Survivors. Uh, as well and it, yeah it's been a great privilege really i've been involved with the national diversity awards for four or five years now uh, five as, years, a, yeah. as a sponsor and other as a judge and it's always a fantastic uh, um uh initiative to be involved in you know we'll talk about it a lot but anything from the judging all the way to you know the awards evening but also what happens afterwards uh, if you know potentially even more important so uh, lovely to be here today. Thanks, and thank you. And if you want energy, um, hey, 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 we've got, <laughs> we've got the main man who's who works for the Electoral Foundation. He's also a financed uh, kind of advisor as well. But he's the work that he does for communities uh, in London and in Fairfield is phenomenal. But this man has got energy. He's you know he's got real good energy. He's also a fantastic friend and judge. 
Give us an introduction, David. Uh, listen, thanks for that. You really have buffed me up. But, you know, I didn't need any more energy. I already got that. You know, when you say stuff like that, it just gets me going. But <laughs> I've been a judge here. This is now my fifth year, right? My fifth year. And the reason why I keep coming back, Paul, I absolutely love it. Having so many people with different pro protected characteristics in the room from the length and breadth of the country is amazing. And for me, when I sit in bed and go through all of those applications, nominations, and cry myself to sleep at night because they're all great, wake up the next morning fully refreshed that we know, right? We know that in this country, you've got some amazing people who are not only just listening today, but who've applied to do this. I mean, by day, I'm the CEO of the Alito Foundation and a financial planner, but I run charities in, in Botswana, Kenya, and just truly, truly love life. So really looking forward to joining in this debate and discussion. So thank you, David. So like I say, today we want all you nominees out there to get, you know, some insight about, you know, what the judges are looking for, you know, what the awards is all about, what, you know, what, what the look and feel of it is, you know, as well. Uh, and there's no better person to actually start that journey because Dr. Amu Raju actually came to me um, a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? And this is why this whole started. And he said, I just don't think you realise the impact that the National Diversity Awards has had on me personally and my organisation. It's really enhanced us as a national brand. Um, it's given us recognition that we never thought that we would get. And this guy has won so many awards, <laughs> books and so on and so forth. But he said it was absolutely phenomenal. But... Don't take my word for it. Take Dr. Amu Raju's uh, word for it. Just take us through your, you know, what that process was like for you and, and what it meant for you personally. Yeah, so I think this time last year, I think roughly around this time last year, I was um, I received an email saying you've been nominated. And um, I thought, great, um, <laughs> what recognition. I only found out about a two or three weeks ago, actually, who nominated me. So that was very nice of them that I did uh, click there. But what a great feeling for anybody uh, who, particularly for that category where it's a lifetime achievement, because you can spend, I, I think, as you said earlier, Paul, a lot of, a lot of people work all their life uh, uh, in under the radar, making a difference, and then no one's actually really monitoring or even recognizing the difference they have made in their own communities and this award this nomination it, it suddenly kind of alerted me that I'm being watched outside my own city uh, somebody outside my city has, has has nominated me and so I think what for me was really important that I wanted to maximize on not just about it wasn't about winning the award it was about involving as many people, making them aware of what this award means, not just to me, but to the charity I've run, because the charity I've run, it, it started at roughly the same time I joined it. And so our journeys uh, have been parallel. And I found it to be, I think, the important thing to recognise, it, 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 it gave me a boost in confidence. You know, you're, you, you, like many people, you work hard and... Uh, your trustees will pat you on the back every now and then. Um, but when you're at the top of an organisation, it's quite a lonely place to be. Um, you, and so when, when when you get an external nomination, it gives you that vitamin injection that you, you suddenly need to actually think, right, I'm doing something right, uh, you know, full steam ahead. Um, and that's what that initial um, uh, nomination did to me. And, it, and, it, and it, it made me kind of round up the troops and said, Let's start spreading the word. Let's, because I know one of the things we had to do then was to encourage people to to vote and write statements as to why they thought I was um, um, worthy of this award. And again, that was quite a, a heartwarming experience to see these comments suddenly coming from people who I hadn't heard of or seen for years, uh, and suddenly get comments as to how I'd helped them or my charity had yeah. helped them or some of the leadership. They, decisions I had made in the city had 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 an impact on them. So, uh, again, very, very heartwarming. Do you want me to continue? Or is it... <laughs> no, no, I, I think some make some very good points. And I, I'm just going to, it's a nice segue into why the National Diversity Awards was started, because um, it's, it, does anybody know if you can put in the chat how many uh, years it's been going? So I just want to know if anybody knows the history of the National Diversity Awards. If you could very quickly, 12, Jackie Gavin, <laughs> 
13. <laughs> um, it isn't actually, um, it's the since 2012. So I think it's in its 13th year, in 12 years, sorry, yeah. 12 years. Should know that, shouldn't I? I'm, maths was never my forte. But the very first National University Awards is in 2012. Um, and we knew we had something special at that point. And one of the reasons why it started um, is because there was someone that was very dear to me. And if you don't know my backstory, I was fostered, you know, went through the care system, had no parents, spent many Christmases and birthdays by myself. And there was a guy called James Class that took me under his wing and, uh, you know, just made me believe in myself. Anyway, he sadly passed away uh, with cancer uh, not a couple of years after we met. And he filled out the, uh, the Anglican Cathedral with well wishes um, standing at the back. And the Anglican Cathedral is where we... Um, where we actually hold it. And he never knew what role model he was, not only to me, because he was a massive influence in, with me, but to many, many other people across uh, his community. So it got me thinking, why don't we tell people you are amazing before it's too late? We're always sitting there saying you're a legend before, you know, and the, uh, you know we don't actually tell them before it's actually too late. So the National Diversity Award was born out of that. Um, and... It's uh, it's a way to sit there, and it was designed in, in the first years to actually get people to know that when people nominate you, they can actually say what you've done for them. So that's a really important part of that. So whether you've been shortlisted or not, whether you've been nominated, people will say these nice things, and they will actually sit there and go, well, do you know what? Thank you so much. I never knew what impact I had had over these years for all these many people from all these different strands of diversity. And that's how the National Diversity Award was born. And we always keep the integrity and we always keep a genuine award for people that do many, many stuff. But that's a nice segue, actually, to my next guest, which is Christos, who is a sponsor and a judge as well. He's been involved for five years. Um, and, um, yeah, and I just wonder what you look for as a sponsor. Why did you get involved as a sponsor and why did you, what do you get look for as a judge? Um, yeah, I think, you know, the reason why Autotrader is sponsoring the awards for so many years is the fact that we want to celebrate all these incredible individuals and, and, and groups uh, uh, that do, uh, you know, this fantastic work. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's very important for us to connect with lots of individuals like that uh, and community groups uh, in order to, you know, bring them in, learn from them. Uh, so it's a great opportunity not only to celebrate them, but really connect. Uh, it helps us to, when it comes to, you know, trying to create more, more a, a more inclusive, a more diverse uh, company, uh, trying to change our industries that we belong in. Uh, which is, are not uh, as diverse as they, as they should be. It's such a fantastic way uh, because, you know, it helps our people get inspired uh, uh, from, from all these incredible individuals. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the fantastic thing is not just the award evening, as I said, but what happens afterwards, uh, that we make those connections, uh, we can learn from them, we can support their work, uh, you know, because it, it's, part of what, it's part of what we do. Uh, but I guess the main reason, I think, uh, apart from uh, everything else, is, is that fundamentally we really believe that these people should be celebrated uh, and they should be celebrated in the best possible way. They deserve to be celebrated in a big way. They deserve to be celebrated in a big cathedral, in an evening with so many people watching them, the people that they work with, their friends and family, with, with being on TV like they are every year, they deserve nothing less than, you know, all the other big yeah. events or the other big awards that we see out there, you know, celebrating artists that do great work. But these people deserve the same kind of big celebration, nothing less. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm just going to uh, introduce, there's somebody put in the chat that we've got an all-male cast here, and I want to just address this. We've got a very diverse judging panel. Um, it's just unfortunate at this moment, the date that we did it, we did it very quickly because we wanted to get you guys to get this up and get nominations going and get to know where you, where you are. So it's unfortunate that some, uh, a lot of the female judges were there, weren't available at this point. But we will do another one because we are going to do a series of these and we will have a large a representation of women within that. So I do apologize at this point where we haven't got a woman, uh, a woman on the actual panel, 
but we have a good representation, not just of women, but diversities and everything as our judging panel as well. So I just wanted to address that. Um, okay, so David, okay, as a judge and having been to the awards, um, tell me about, you know, your your journey with the National Diversity Awards, what it means to you. And actually, some I know you made some connections as well through that. So yeah. if you could just take me your journey. Yeah, do you know what, Paul? I think, as I was saying earlier, I met Christos. I sat on his table, actually, in the first year at the National Diversity Awards. And I was just kind of blown away by the people on the table and why they were attending from Auto Trader and how they had just really embraced meeting new people, learning, growing, and just watching and listening to everyone's story. I mean, for me, the great thing about this is these are, these are unsung heroes, people who are going around doing this day by day by day. You know, I probably walked past five or six nom nominees today and not even known it because they're just going around doing what they what they do. And, and for me, I, I think the real highlight is just when you recognise that someone who has come from a really adverse background and they then decide they actually don't want anyone to... To, to, to go through what they've gone through. They don't want them to feel like they've felt and they want to create a charity and organization at CIC to be able to help other people. These people are creating legacy, real legacy, and they don't see it that way. You know, they just don't want to be in a position they were in and they want other people to help. And for me, that's what makes us great as a, as, as a country. There are so many people. You're talking about 95,000 nominations. Yeah. I mean, that is an incredible amount. And that's not everybody, right? Because not everybody knows about the National Diversity Awards yet. So for me, that's the first thing is, is, is why I'm involved, because I just love seeing how we are changing as a nation and helping ourselves and other people and creating that, that legacy. And as a judge, I, you know, I must say, it's not easy. This is not an easy job to do. It's very rewarding, but it's not easy. Because when you look at the ones that, that, that land on my desk, and I know they've been shortlisted down to probably the top 80, you know, to go from 80 down to a shortlist of 10 is really quite challenging. And when you're reading and rereading and rereading and just looking at the, 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 the nomination itself and also the support, the supportive emails that people write about the, the, the nominee, they're just amazing. Now, one of the things that we're really careful on is ensuring that this is not a popularity contest. I'm not really interested that someone's got a thousand votes and they've only got two or three lines. I'd much rather have 10 votes of people saying, this is the impact that this person has made in my life, my community, the wider community. And this is, a comp this is the impact that's going to continue. And this is a legacy that's going to be created. Because we have seen some where you've got a thousand, two thousand votes because someone's already actually famous in their own right, but not necessarily have the impact that someone in a cute small community up in Scotland, you know, that, that may, or up in the Shetland Isles or down on, on, on the coast of, of Cornwall. So for me, it really is about the level of impact that, that people have. Now, when we judge, uh, I go through my list at 85. I have a co-judge. I don't know if you know him, but he's the smiliest man in the world, Keith Fraser. He's my co-judge. And we then get together with our short list of 10. So he'll have 10, I'll have 10. And we don't necessarily actually agree on which 10 they are, but we'll probably end up with the top five or six together. Then after that, we then come to a moderation panel, which is with the other judges. And we have to explain our reasoning as to why we've got to our top 10. And then there's a little bit of a bun fight. And uh, we then kind of come up with our, with our top eight, who, and literally, you can put a fag paper between them. You know, the top eight, they should all receive an award. I know we can't do that. We have to pick one. But anyone who's in that top eight, even the top 10, is doing amazing, amazing, amazing work. And, Paul, I've been at those awards, walking around, and I always make a habit of picking up the pictures, going to find out what table they're on, and just say congratulations to the top eight people. Always do that. And they're like, am I going to win? Am I going to win? I say, I can't tell you who's going to win, but... You're a winner because you are here. And some people think, oh, you're just saying that, but you are a winner because you're there, you're at the awards, you've made it. You've been recognised, not just by me and Keith as a judge, but by all the other judges who just come together and say, yeah, that's right, we've made the right decision. And you yeah. talk about integrity, Paul. Integrity is so important. So for me, it, it, it is fantastic really being here. And that process that we go through to get down to the final 
the, to, to, to the final winner of, of, of my category is, is fantastic. Good, fantastic. Thank you. So we've got lots of comments as well. So I'm going to address some of the comments before we go on to our next question. Um, and and just actually some reiterating what you said. So um, it was the first time for me being in, uh, in a public vote and to read the beautiful comments as, uh, has been a win in itself and has moved me to tears. That's from Des. Uh, a oh, lovely wow. fix. Um, so, and we get that a lot. We had a woman yesterday actually ring me as well, saying the same thing. She was a lifetime achiever. She never realized the impact that I've had. And it's just, you know, she says she's really old now, but it's just making me feel with such joy that that what these uh, nominations are coming. So keep make sure you tell people that they are doing amazing things. That's really important. You know, not mm -hmm. many people do that these days. You know, thank you. Say a thank you to the people that have helped you along yeah. the way. Get them nominated in the process. And as David said, it is not just a popularity contest. It's the number of, it's the what's in the vote is, 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 is crucial as well. So um, I'm going to go back to Dr. Amar Raju. So you was lifetime achiever. What was it like for you, the experience of the night itself? And then we'll go to the questions on here as well. We'll, we'll answer some of the questions that are on the chat. So don't worry, we haven't forgotten. It, it was undoubtedly one of the best nights of my life. Uh, you, that Liverpool Anglican Cathedral is an incredible venue. Um, you know, just from the outside, you think, "Wow, what a what a what a work of art!" But as soon as you step inside, you know you are you want to have a good night, um, regardless of whether you win or not. You know this is going to be a special evening. Just the way uh, you guys have, have have set up the the from the entrance all the way down to your seating and the way you looked after. An incredible night, and and just watching. Uh, obviously, my ward was was I think it was the last on the night, uh, and and watching all the nom nominations read out for all the other awards, and and watching people go up and and make those speeches and some of the watching their videos. What an incredible experience! And you're right, you, you, I was able to witness some of the incredible work that other organisations or other individuals are doing around the country. And for one of the things, I think I said it in my um, acceptance speech, I felt so inspired by the talent that was in that room and that energy and commitment to the community that was in that room. That I left that room with an award at the end of the night, but I'm, I've, with more importantly than that, I left with inspiration that I feel, you know, I'm, I'm mid-50s now, I wish I was 20 years younger because... That 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 evening really energized me, and I thought I nearly need to go out there and do some more. I felt slightly inadequate in some some aspects as to what other people had had done and achieved, and it was just a great evening, great evening, and and great to watch all those other people win the win those awards. And, and I say, I, I thoroughly recommend if you think you've got somebody in your line of sight who needs that to be nominated, please go and do it because. It, it, it's just the nomination, as you said earlier, means a lot to people. So can we talk about the nomination process? I don't know. I mean, I can talk about it, but does any of you guys know about the nomination process? I think, uh, David, you know quite a lot about it and how it works, don't you? Um, yeah. And how you go about getting nominated for this award or nominating someone. Yeah. So you go to the website and there is a button to click nominate and you select the person who you are looking to nominate and you put a reason why you're nominating them. Once they've been nominated, they are then informed that they have been nominated, they have been nominated, and they then share that with their friends, family, and their network, asking for them to vote for them. Now, the most important thing is, if you're voting for someone, please, 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 I'm going to say please again, say the reasons why, not just one line, he's a really nice guy and I like what he does. You know, he's a really nice guy because... And I like what he does, which is X, Y, Z, and adds that level of impact. If you're looking for a reason to catch a judge's eye, make sure that you've got that qualitative piece in there, because that's what we're reading. That's what we're looking for. Make me cry. Send me to tears. That's what is required. And you're not going to do that just by saying, he's a nice guy, she's a nice guy, they have done this or they have done that. You know, Really talk about how it has impacted your life. Yeah, I think that's an important point because we do get some nominations where, you know, they're very popular on maybe some social media and you've got literally thousands upon thousands of followers and it's he's great, he's nice. And that's 
not what yeah. we're looking for. We're looking for what impact that person has had on you specifically and tell them what impact they've uh, you've had. Not only are the judges looking for that, but ov obviously the, the nominees are looking for that as well because they don't yeah. realise that. I mean, obviously you've got to evidence as well. You know, it's not just about writing lots of different things and, you know, the votes are one thing. Um, but if you've, you know, let's say one that was in the... Uh, 2012 National Diversity Awards, or 13, I think it was actually, there was a small LGBTQ plus charity in Dunfermline, and they only helped like maybe 20 people within that community. But that was vital work for that community because that was the only outlet for them at there. Black Girls Hike was another one, which was a couple of years ago, where this is taking black girls, mm -hmm. um, it's hiking in, in, the, in the Lake Districts and various other things because they, they didn't have an outlet for that. And that was another nomination that was there. To so someone that, you know, the blind builder is another one that stands out for me who lost his eyesight and continued to, to, to build uh, his houses and, and, and then encouraged other people to actually do that that had disabilities as well. So he created a, a, a building company with people with disabilities. There's, there's so many different outlets that are out there. And I want to hear in the chat what you do as well in in the, in 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 your day to day. What what have you done to make a difference? So what 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 kind of work do you do as well? Um, but whilst we're doing that, um, I'd like to hear from Christos. Obviously, you know that's uh, David. Well, that's what David's looking for. You know, what category do you um, actually um, judge, and uh, what do you find the most challenging? Yeah, I mean, through the years, I think I've just a few a few categories, both yeah. individual ca categories and then for community organizations as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, I'll touch on the organizations uh, uh, as well uh, a bit. Uh, I think David ca covered the individual um, categories very well. So I think, you know, talk about the impact that you're having and then talk about the impact that you're having both with, you know, if you have some numbers, they don't need to be perfect. We're not expecting people to have sort of like very complex uh, reporting tools or anything like that fancy because we understand actually that you might not have that in place. But talk about the numbers and the you know, number of people that you're helping. But also tell the stories. Give us the stories about the people that you're helping, the people you're supporting, the people you're helping thrive and overcome obstacles. Uh, uh, talk to, you know, include them in your nomination. And I think it goes back to what David said. It's the best way to do it. Ask them to actually uh, support your nomination by sharing their stories. Uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just needs to be authentic. It just needs to be like very genuine. Uh, now, you know, not everyone is as skilled in in the in the written form, I guess. But what we're looking for, we don't care if there's a mistake, but we're looking for the real stories and the genuine stories. It doesn't have to be mm. perfect. It just needs to be real. And then, it, you know, that will actually make you stand out a lot more than a very well formatted uh, uh, submission. Uh, and that's really yeah. what stands out every single time, uh, really, for us. But I cannot stress out uh, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and say that our job is very difficult uh, because at the end of the day, we're not doing any of that work. We're just reading about it. So, uh, you know, we've got that perspective. But it's very inspiring because every single nomination is just an incredible story. And every, like every year, and, you know, doing this for so many years and every year being so pleasantly surprised that there are all these people, all these organizations doing all this work, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you win or not. Just the fact that you're nominated and all these people are supporting you is really the most important thing. And that, that's what you need to take away. However, it's great to win. Uh, of course, it's great to win. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah, for me, it's uh, keep it real. Uh, give your genuine stories uh, and make sure you highlight the impact uh, uh, with uh, whatever... Um, numbers you have as well that also help uh, sort of like as a good summary yeah somebody asked if there was a if there was a highly commended and no there isn't a highly commended i think the highly commended is just getting you getting shortlisted for the awards and trust me there's a fine line between someone getting shortlisted and not getting shortlisted it's such a difficult difficult decision do you know what i mean because how do you differentiate someone that's you know working uh, you know, cutting hair with people with autism and, and, and helping children like that to someone that's, 
you know, get, you know, got this dystonia and is is just in enhancing people's awareness of that. It's just such a difficult decision for the judges to do, but it's also done with a genuine heart as well. You know, nobody wins an award in the National Diversity Awards because we know them. We actually, um, one of the processes that we do do is if the judges actually know a nominee, they have to declare it, otherwise it will yeah. sit there and make that nomination void because, um, yeah. and then it's taken another panel of judges to see if it is kind of okay for that, for that to do, for them to, to go through or not. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, it just depends. Um, and how person they know them as as an individual. David, I know you want to say a few things as well. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that when I get down to the final 10 or 12, I actually pick up the phone to some of the people that have um, voted for them, just to hear it in their words as to the level of impact, which just adds a little bit more um, flavour to us making that decision. So it does help where you've got uh, numbers where people say that they're willing to be contacted, because we do do that as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we've got a couple of questions as well, which I'm trying to keep on a bit because so many questions coming through. Um, and we've got um, one talking about different categories as well. And uh, so there's, uh, I think, uh, just let me get to the question itself. Um, I think it's Katie Neve and she asked, you know, she's, she's from a trans background. Does she go for the LGBTQ plus uh, positive role model or does she go for the gender category? And the answer is, um, you could go for both if you really wanted to. Mm. It's what fits what you are because there's no there's no kind of um, discrimination in the gender category. You know, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you're trans, you know, non-binary, whatever that may be. You know, what, if you're doing work within the gender category, then absolutely go for that. Or if it is the LGBTQ+, um, you can go for actual both. And th there has been instances where some people have been nominated for two and, and they've you know, they've been recognised in both as well, but they haven't been recognised in both. We tend to put them in category, but the judges then will work out which category is best for them. Um, so I think that's important to add um, because some people do lots of different work in different multi-strands. And, and so, you know, you've got to really work out which is best for you. We're talking about votes as well, sorry. So can I just uh, answer another question from Chris? And he said about tickets. Now we give free tickets to every shortlisted nominee that is is actually actually awards. Thanks to the sponsors that are there and so on and so forth. And we actually give heavily discounted tickets to any people that want to come with them as well um, for the actual award itself. Um, and also anybody that's got carers and so on and so forth and, and need anybody that, that needs to help them throughout the evening, um, we make it as inclusive as we can. So. There's, uh, there's carers kind of rates as well that people are there. So it's very inclusive and, and every, every nominee gets free tickets um, for the awards itself. Um, we've got another one from Chris, um, Charis, sorry, which is how many votes would you suggest an individual needs to stand a chance of making the shortlist? Um, how many votes did you have, Amo? How many votes? Yeah. I think it was around 120, 140, I think. It was about 140. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's how many statements I read. Um, so, and as we said earlier, they are very, very. You get quite emotional reading them, um, and and that was a real, real eye opener for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And David and Christos, going to you. So you've you've read many, many nominations. What's the you know? Obviously, if you just got one vote, I think that really does discount something. So we need more than one vote. But as we said before, it's not a popularity contest, and um, yeah. and actually, what's in the nomination can count as well. But what, how, you know, how many votes would you say people need? I think it's all in the context of uh, actually looking at the nomination as well and see what the you know what the reach of that organization or individual is, because you know depending on where you are in the country, that will impact. You know, if you you know I'm in Manchester, okay, so Manchester, Greater Manchester is three million people. If you have an organization that they impact and their geographical reach is very big, yeah, then you would expect to see a few more votes. If you have in a smaller part of the country as well, we always get that in context as well. So I don't think there is a hard and fast rule, uh, but yeah. As you say, if it is only one or two votes, and then those one to two votes are very short, uh, sort of like votes in the comments only say, yeah, great, you know, great person, a great, great organization, that doesn't really give a lot of the judges to, to go by. Uh, 
So, you know, it does decrease your chances. I don't think it eliminates your chances, but obviously it decreases your chances because at the end of the day, we'll have to make a decision somehow. And um, and has anybody of you guys done the age category? I do. I do positive role model for age, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a question from Anonymous. Can you explain that about the role, positive role model for, of the year for age? What will you be looking for in this category, please? And before you answer that, I've got to ask you a few questions, uh, answer a few things because the age category, sure. uh, again, comes from young, old, and people that just are dealing with maybe younger people, older people, or yeah. um, or just whatever age it is. So, yeah. What are you looking for, personally? Uh, well, well, for me, I, I think I'm genuinely blown away by the number of young people that get nominated for this. Uh, and when I say young people, from as young as 10, you know, who are doing great things in their community, and when we then also look at the other end of the spectrum, you know, we've got our elders in their 80s and 90s who are still going out there do, 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 doing great work. So in, in terms of what I'm looking at is the impact, again, that they're having in their community. So if I start to think about a disabled young man in a wheelchair who has cerebral palsy and he's out there fundraising for the cerebral palsy charity by doing things locally then that's great because that affects everyone if i'm thinking about elders who are setting up food kitchens during covid uh, to help feed uh, people who cannot access uh, food or you know have lost their income you know that equally is 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 just as valid so uh, again ages whatever your age is it's not a barrier do not be put off of uh, nominating someone because of how how old they are but it is, it's a positive aspect of what they are doing that is really important. Yeah. And, you know, it could be a young person that is, is nominated. It could be someone that's working with young people or older people. I remember one um, age category that really stood out for me is that there was a, a charity, I think, down south somewhere, and they checked up on people, older people that, you know, their partner had died. And it can be a very lonely place for some people when their partner dies and, and, uh, They've literally got no outlet. They don't go out the house and they knock on people's doors and say, you know, just a listening ear and just a just a help for them, you know, just to say, I'm here, you know, anything that you need, and you know, even if it's just a talk, whatever that is, that's why it'll work. It's just amazing. And and um, and just going on to that, when I ask people in the in the chat about what they did, um, and there's so many people that have put what they do. Um, Chris uh Carrie said, I've been uh a dyspraxia youth champion for two years. Uh, I'm the first adult social group coordinator for the foundation. I'm the first editor for the new foundation blog. I write disability articles. This year alone, I was nominated for the Disability Short Trust 100 Power List and uh, West, I think WM respects so West Midland, maybe WM 50. Um, I'm also a finalist in the Learning Disability and Autism Leaders List. And I am a mentor, a young individual with uh, dyslexia. And I'm a graduate of the university uh, and dyslexic myself. So that's just one person. Another person, Leslie said, helping children to say their first words, creating a space for neurodivergent people and their families to have a place to call their own. Every day we are humbled by the families in our community. I mean, it just it literally just brings me to tears what you guys do and how much you make. Um, and um, and uh, Suki said, the founder of Let's Talk About It, using my personal journey on abuse to raise awareness and support the youth and more on mental health and abuse. And that's so poignant today. It's such a it's such a place where mental health is is very, very poignant. And lots of people are going through hard times and, and you are a vital space for there, um, for these people. One more before I go on to the next question is the Space Group Manchester is made up of parent volunteers, we all have disabled children and we, are at, at, we arrange activities for families um, who can't normally access. In summer 2024, we'll be offering 4,232 children places. We also run peer-to-peer -peer support groups across the city. We help families with, uh, with form filming and we go into schools and deliver a range of training on school workshops. And I think, I believe you were shortlisted last year as well. Um, right. And yeah so yeah it's 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 crazy um so can we can take it through you know ammo you you you, you got you, you you received the news what was that like for yourself you're actually just receiving the news that you've been shortlisted 
Oh gosh, yeah. As I say, it was incredible, and and, and it's nice. It's a nice feeling because when you when you're uh, working at a local level, you you think your impact is only at, at a local level too, but the news made me feel that I was being recognized outside the the area where I work, and it kind of gave me um, a feeling of uh whatever i'm doing i'm doing right it, it kind of gave me an endorsement um and and so it, it, it the news of being nominated was 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 fantastic in that aspect but as i say be, uh, being there on the night um, and then winning when i saw everybody around me in the, in the room uh, and seeing that these are all people like me they were just normal people doing great uh, things in their own community and getting recognition. Uh, and that's why, you know, sometimes when you're nominating someone, you may have this kind of apprehension or you, you may think, oh, are they special enough? And I would say you, you, the fact that you thought about them, they are already special. And therefore, please do go and nominate these individuals because, um, as I say, you wouldn't think, in my case, you go from a nomination all the way to, to a short list and then actually winning on stage. You don't, it can happen, like quote the lottery, it can happen to anyone. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, is there any standouts for you, Christos, that, you know, a nominee that that has really stood out for you throughout the number of years that that you've you've been doing this? Oh God, I don't, I don't think I can actually choose one. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just incredible. Like, like all the, all these years, you know, and the number of, individuals and i know we get repeat nominations you know sometimes you will see see people again uh that that you know make it to the list again but the number of individuals and organizations every single year uh, that are actually uh you know um uh, end up uh, uh on on the on the finalist list is is incredible uh i w I, w I would say that you know, like David meeting them on the, on the night. Uh, um, I think a couple of years ago, I think one of the winners in my category was a, a rugby and LGBT rugby team, and actually meeting them on the on the night and seeing how much actually it mattered to them to be, you know, mm. to win, uh, is incredible. Uh, and the fact that actually of how it has helped them afterwards as well to, you know, to continue doing what they're doing to. Know, make more connections and you know you know stay inspired in order to keep doing what they're doing because it you know a lot of these things are so difficult and we know actually that all the inclusive uh, inclusion and diverse initiatives uh, you know on a global level are under a lot of you know under attack at the moment so it's even more important to continue with this work because these people actually need uh, to feel the appreciation, need to feel the recognition in order to, to continue, uh, especially during this time. Yeah. And I think one, once, I think that's some fantastic stories there. Can I just add one that, where I know we don't like to say what stands out, but this, oh, this person always stood out for me. Is he one of the smartest people in the world? And he was, a, at the time, I think it was 12, but his story, his Joshua Beckford, and he was a, a young uh, black kid with autism. Yeah. And, by the age of three, he could speak fluent Mandarin. Um, by the age of six, he went to, uh, I think it's Cambridge University or Oxford, one of the one of the main ones, and studied philosophy and passed uh, with a with a first or a distinction. Um, he campaigns in over ninety nine countries about uh, you know neurodiversity, and uh, and he uh, he's just a phenomenal guy. And one interesting story: I was in awe of this kid when he came off the stage, and and I said to him, "Wow, you're just amazing." He went, "Me." You created all this, and I went to him. You have no idea, Joshua. You are so far more, uh, you know, uh, superior to what I am and what you've done and what you've achieved in your short time. It's just phenomenal. It always stuck, it always stuck me, with me that one, which is which is amazing. Um, and just um, I've just got some more questions as well, so I want to just make sure that we get through all the questions that we um, that we that we need. And we're talking about evidence and what evidence people need to upload and. And some talk about, you know, obviously, it's you know, not everybody's um, tech savvy. So what I suggest you do, if you're not tech savvy um, and you want to get evidence in, then contact Emma, um, who will help you 
um, you know, navigate that those nominations and those nominations will, uh, the evidence will get through to the judges as well. Um, and there was another question is, do all the nominees get read? Yes, they do. But obviously we have to whittle them down. So if anybody that's got just a one liners or just one vote or don't send evidence in, obviously we like to see a little bit of evidence to say what you do. It doesn't have to be massive amounts as to what you put on that evidence and, and the impact that you've actually had really matters as well um, also. Um, and David, just before we go on to the next kind of um, thing, um, who's the standout for you? I've got I've got a couple and one who actually didn't win but was a finalist and uh, he, a neurodivergent guy who didn't do very well at school but the awards really uplifted him and when it because it actually came down to him and the finalist uh, and, and the winner and the actual winner and I remember having a conversation with the with the group afterwards and also with Keith and it was right that the person who won won and spoke to him and he just said look I am genuinely a winner for being here and this has opened up a massive platform for me which, you know, he's already speaking in schools, been invited into conferences to speak, but it's just taken him even further. And what was great was I saw him at the awards again last year, where he just turned up as a guest, not to be nominally turned up, because he truly believed in the power of the awards, which was great. Second person is a lady called Roshan from Dope Black Women. Now, if you were at the awards or watched the awards last year, she just could not believe that she'd won. She she was just rooted to her chair. She was just literally frozen, you know, when it came. And she's like, me, me, me. And she got up and she didn't even know what to say because she never expected to win. But uh, don't, don't black w women, a CIC, uh, just do amazing work for black women who are, are, are challenged in their professional and personal lives. And particularly, you know, when I think about what you hear, what we've heard this year about Diane Abbott, you know, it triggering and it challenged, challenged black women and they continue to do the work. But what was great was after we were talking and now I'm the mentor to dope black women in terms of helping them get funding, showing them how to write a business plan properly. And they won without being as professional as a lot of charities are. So for, so for me, that stands out because your pure passion that has driven what it is they've done, receiving no money, but doing it for just a greater cause and ensuring that there's a safe space uh, for, for black women, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And so we're going to talk, tackle a couple of things. Um, obviously, the, the impact after the actual awards as well, because we get we, we, we sometimes do events afterwards and we get, you know, nominees and shortlisted nominees around the table and, and get to what impact they've actually had. And, and actually some of the sponsors do get involved with the nominees as well, which is really, really important. But I hasten to add the impact of the awards and, and the national recognition it gives them can increase funding for them, for instance, if they, you know, they get, so when you're doing funding applications and so on and so forth, it can actually, you know, bode well for you as an organization. Um, obviously we do express that you, you we send you press releases and stuff like that that you can utilize so then you can utilize that press release and send that to your national or local newspapers um and get recognition that way as well which is which is fantastic if you ever need any help with that obviously contact us as well um but the, you know more importantly you know we want you to be in the news we want we ITV news is has been with us for for lots of years and they've highlighted some of the shortlisted nominees um, throughout the national kind of um, broadcast and the and the local broadcast, which has been phenomenal as well. So the reach for many years has has been phenomenal for the shortlisted nominees too. Um, and obviously we're talking about the uh, the evidence kind of uh, kind of process within that. Um, it's it's really difficult to sit there and say what evidence you actually need, but has a judge, I know we spoke about a little bit, but could we go a little bit further um, into your categories that you um, you go into and why um, someone that maybe doesn't have thousands of votes sit there and get nominated or, or shortlisted? Does anybody want to tackle that one? Yeah, I think, I think, I think, be you know look at the questions the questions let the questions guide you when it comes to what you include in your nomination uh, 
And as we said before, uh, try to focus on, you know, the impact that you're having. And, you know, the impact is the most important thing, really, that we're looking at. Uh, and that's both in the numbers, but also in the stories of the people that you have impacted. Uh, and, you know, focus more on that as opposed to sort of like any more general generalizations about what you're trying to achieve. Uh, uh, because, you know, it it is a, a large number of nominations. So, so I think being quite detailed about the impact, uh, and, you know, for me, sets you, um, you know, above the competition because it's much easier for us to actually um, appreciate uh, what, you, what you're doing uh, and, you know, give you those scores above everyone else when we can see the impact that you're having. So focus on the impact would be my advice. Exactly. Um, thank you. And what about the partnerships that can be created from this? Because and this is a really important part as well, because I've seen so many partnerships have been devolved from this. You know, so, you know, people look at their shortlisted nominees and they've made connections with each other. Um, you know, look at, you know, you know, who's out there, look at the sponsors that are out there, reach out to the sponsors. Um, have you created any partnerships with any organizations? Um, I'm going to give first, Amo, um, you know, what the impact was for you. Have you created any, uh, you know, kind of partnerships or has, has it put you in a, in a position where you can uh, apply for more funding and so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean, the, the impact on, on, on a number of levels. Uh, personally, obviously, uh, my ego is boosted, but the, the main thing is that I, I, I can now, with pride, add another line to my email signature, winner of the National Diversity Awards Lifetime Achievement Award. That's that's a, but one my bid writer made an appoint made a point to me said you know it gives us a bit of uh, credibility in our funding bids that the leader of the organisation is has been recognised nationally as well and it, it, it kind of it has raised my profile individually i get asked to do as i said earlier on a lot of keynote speeches now about issues around diversity um and 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 what my organization has has done to uh, uh to be as diverse as possible in its service and its staff base and its uh, user base but also um on on the, the other level for me personally is that it, it gives me the confidence that I know what I'm talking about. Winning an award gives you gives you the confidence that okay, other people have judged me and have, have put me, raised my profile, and given me the confidence to be able to talk about this subject with a little bit more credibility. Uh, and so that's and just on that point you were making earlier on about answering the questions, I've written funding bids for my charity, so I can talk about my charity and, and what it's achieved. But when you're uh, when you're nominated as an individual for an award. I, I the, the steps I had to take before I answered those questions, I just mapped out my journey as an individual, as what I've achieved personally. That helped me uh, complete those answers. So for any of your uh, the viewers here um, to, to, today and, and when you watch it afterwards, I would say map out your journey personally, what you've done alongside what you've done in the organisation that you, you work for, uh, because that really helped me answer those questions. And I, and I think facts and figures as well, you know, when you put down the evidence is, is crucial as well. You know, you can talk about, you know, I've helped so-and-so, this person, which is good, but if you can put an overall impact of what you've done as well, and that doesn't have to be thousands of thousands of people, that can be 25 people within that area. It's all within a context of that community uh, and where in the demographics it is. And there's so many nuances, we, you know, within that. But, you know, try and put some evidence in uh, as regards to, you know, the impact that you've had, how many people it has reached and so on and so forth. Which uh, And that and when people do that, that tends to correlate with what people are saying about you in the nominations as well. I think that's that's really, really crucial. Uh, I've got a question from Leslie Collier. It says, can people submit a video testimonials or pictures um, for a young person as we have some members who aren't able to verbalise or struggle using online systems or have learning disability, disabilities and wish to take part, um, also with a number, a minimum word as they struggle to express themselves. Well, uh, the answer is yes, you can. Um, and again, you could send them to us if you if you really need to. Um, and also, you know, if uh, if it, the charity just makes out that they are a charity that helps with learning difficulties and they want to write something online, very simple, 
then absolutely that goes goes towards the votes as well because again it's quite fluid you know the the, the evidence is quite fluid in that aspect because we look at what the organization does or the or the, that particular person does and then we can get what them votes really mean from that depending on uh if they've got learning difficulties or they haven't and so on and so forth um which is great so on the night i'm just going to say i know we talked about a little bit but I've been doing the National Diversity Awards for 13 years. Um, the journey was we did it in Manchester the first year, Leeds the second year, London the third year. So we did travel around. Then we went to the Anglican Cathedral in 2014, uh, 15, should I say. And we just couldn't go anywhere else. We really couldn't because it's just a phenomenal experience. What we do on the night as well, we, we, don't, we go to town. The cathedral looks amazing. Phenomenal. You'll walk in there and you'll go, absolutely Wow. Right. And I go in there now as the founder and I still go, that's a phenomenal venue. Not only that, then you look around the room, you've got every strand of diversity in that room, as I said in the beginning, every single strand, every single from all across the UK. So when I walk around in the tables, which I walk across every single table at the actual awards, just to say hello, I'll say, where are you from? I'm from Birmingham. I'm from Manchester. I'm from London. I'm from Northern Ireland. I'm from you know, from uh, Norfolk, and, and it's just like, and they're all on one, one table, just celebrating who they are, and they're all from different strands of diversity, and that's just heartwarming, because nobody's got an agenda, there's no discrimination in this in this cathedral, it's like, you're from an LGBTQ plus background, you're doing phenomenal work, well done to you, you're from a disability background, well done to you, you're from a, you're from a, uh, a different race or religion, you're doing fantastic work, well done to you. And that's kind of what society should be. It's a safe space for everybody to be and to celebrate inclusion as a whole. So I just want to just get that. This year we've got Claire Bolden again as a, as a host. She, she, she jumped at the chance. We asked her she said, yeah, I want to do it again because she's, she, she loves the awards and it's phenomenal. We have celebrities there as well, but the main show is you guys, you guys that are the main show. You know, forget the celebrities sometimes. It's you that are just doing phenomenal work and you are there to be celebrated. Um, it's glitzy, it's glam, and uh, it's it's one of those nights that you won't forget, as as, as you'll see. Can you sum up um, within your own words as well, um, before we, because we've got four minutes, um, what what it's like for you as well? David. Oh, man. It's the biggest party of the year, it really is. I mean, I, I, I love it. You know, you know, I, I come up and I spend the weekend in Liverpool and the minute I'm walking up to the cathedral, not even getting in, walking up to the cathedral, and when you come through the cathedral gates and you've got the press there, you've got cameras, you've got everyone really dressed up, you know, talking, chattering, excited to get in, the champagne on arrival, how beautiful it is. For me, it is the best, and I've said this to you time and time again, Paul, it's the best award ceremony I've ever been to because there is no agenda. And everyone, everyone there literally just gets on, you know. And for me, that's the world I want to live in. And that's the party I always, always want to be at. And and that's true. And, and me personally, I want you guys to feel like a million, trillion dollars that night because you deserve to actually be there. You know, you've worked hard all year round or for many years to do what you do in the communities. You know, you deserve to be recognised. You deserve to be there. It's just with a genuine heart that you are there, and uh, that's 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 what it's there for me, Christos. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's big, it's bold, uh, and but at the same time, it's very warm and intimate, and everyone feels welcome. And I think that's very important. You know, come as you are. You can glam as much as or as little as you want. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is that you are going to be in. You know. A room, uh, a very impressive room, a very grand room, uh, and you'll be celebrated. You'll get to meet some incredible people, uh, uh, and I think uh, it's just such a special night uh, that uh, you know it will, you know, hopefully have a place in your heart. And last but not least, Amu. Well, you used the word celebrity earlier on, Paul, and and for me that was one night I felt like a celebrity uh, because. From the moment uh, you walk in, you you know it's going to be a special evening. And 
you know, walking up to the stage to a standing ovation. That's the only kind of thing you see at the Oscars or something like that on TV. And that's where I, I suddenly felt very, very important and special. And I've not had that feeling since, but it's it's been great. That that night was great because it, it it's it's imprinted in my memory now. And every every now every if I, ever, if I ever feel down, I just go back to YouTube and look on that video of of, of, of that night. And it's a great, great feeling. So fantastic night, uh, fantastic feeling, and well done to all of you. Fantastic. And uh, we just got one last question from Des. Is how big is the shortlist? So it's uh, for each category, and we will just go through the categories very quickly. So we've got positive role model for age, disability, gender, um, LGBTQ plus, and um, and race and religion. We've got the same categories for community organization, but we've got an extra one for multi strands. We've got entrepreneur of the year. So if you're a business that have done uh, with a disability, have done amazing things um, within your business, uh, you know, nominate for the entrepreneur one. We have got the celebrity of the year as well. So that's a fantastic one. And obviously the lifetime achiever one, which Dr. Amu had been uh, being recognized for. Um, more importantly, whether you make the shortlist or not, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my, uh, my heart and I know from everybody else, um, you know, what you do in the communities is vital, especially in this day and age. There's so much difference in the world and you're making people's life so much better. So I want to thank you from the National Diversity Awards, from the team, from David, from Christos, from Dr. Amu and the rest of the judges and Emma and all the rest of the team that put this together. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, and yeah, hope you get shortlisted. Go into the National Diversity Awards .co.uk um if you've been shortlisted great but also shortlist somebody else that's had an impact on you you know don't just yeah. stop at what you've been nominated nominate other people as well because it will have an impact on them um and uh yeah good luck we hope to see you on october the 4th um and there's a special today because my birthday is on october the 5th so we will be celebrating in the after party and i forgot to mention there is an after party you will see david and christos there especially david you'll see the guy there <laughs> Dancing on the dance floor. Um, so I hope to celebrate with you all there on the 5th of October as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for, for getting involved. And, and thank you to our esteemed panel as well for giving such an informative session. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good, good luck, luck, everybody. Thank you.